Climate forcing is the push of a climate system in one direction or another colder, hotter, wetter, drier. A variety of factors contribute to driving the climate system in different directions. These factors include energy output from the sun, cloud coverage, Earth's axial tilt, shape of a planet's orbit, particles suspended in the atmosphere known as aerosols, and greenhouse gases. The albedo, or reflectivity of clouds, ice, oceans, forests, and more, also affect the energy balance of our planet. Is there an imbalance, or are we at radiative equilibrium? In radiative equilibrium, there is a balance between incoming and outgoing energy. What is happening to the amount of carbon dioxide, methane, and other greenhouse gases? What is happening to average global temperature? Does this mean we are in balance? After watching this video, you will hopefully better understand what radiative equilibrium is. You will also understand that the temperature of our planet depends on how much solar energy it absorbs. Incoming radiation from the sun is considered shortwave radiation. This type of light is able to pass through the atmosphere. 70% of it will be absorbed by Earth's surface. 30% will be reflected back to space. By absorbing sunlight, Earth's surface heats up. Our planet re-emits the energy it has absorbed back to space as long-wave infrared radiation. The absorption of shortwave solar energy causes heating. Emission of long-wave terrestrial radiation causes cooling. This balance between incoming and outgoing radiation creates a state of equilibrium. This balance between incoming and outgoing energy is called radiative equilibrium by scientists. If the amount of incoming energy were to increase, then the amount of outgoing radiation would also increase. But the radiative equilibrium would be reset to a higher level, and the Earth would warm. Levels of two greenhouse gases carbon dioxide and methane have risen and fallen over hundreds of thousands of years. But never have they been at the levels they are today. In fact, as of 2020 carbon dioxide has risen to 412 parts per million. Methane has also risen to over 18,000 parts per billion. This is a magnified image of an aerosol. Aerosols are tiny particles suspended in the atmosphere anywhere from a few days to several years. It could be dust from a desert, or salt from ocean spray. It could have been blasted out of a volcano, or created during a forest fire. It might have flown out of a factory smokestack, or a truck's tailpipe. Some aerosols can cool the planet by reflecting sunlight back to space, or sigh collecting water vapor to form a cloud. Other aerosols absorb sunlight, heating the atmosphere and preventing clouds from forming. Still other aerosols can cause chemical reactions that damage the ozone layer. Aerosols down in the lower atmosphere can cause health issues, including asthma and lung disease. Aerosols are tiny, yet powerful. They are a major influence on Earth's climate system. Aerosols and their impacts on the climate system are studied with instruments on the International Space Station, on planes, and with ground-based instruments. Aerosols are man-made when they come from burning trees to clear land for agriculture, and from burning fossil fuels and automobiles and electrical power generating plants. Dark-colored aerosols absorb radiation and heat the atmosphere. Light-colored aerosols reflect radiation and cool the atmosphere. The role of aerosols and climate forcing is quite complicated. Natural sources of aerosols include dust blown into the atmosphere, especially from the Sahara Desert. It also includes gases from volcanic eruptions that form tiny droplets of sulfuric acid in the stratosphere, and salt crystals from the ocean. After this video, you should better understand how greenhouse gases affect Earth's climate. You should also understand how we need Earth's natural greenhouse effect to have a habitable planet. The presence of an atmosphere keeps the surface of a planet warmer than it would be without it. Without an atmosphere, the surface of the Earth would be about 30 degrees Celsius cooler than it is now. Because the Earth is in radiative equilibrium, we know that the planet emits enough longwave radiation into space to equal the incoming shortwave radiation from the Sun. Most of the long-wave radiation escaping to space is emitted by the atmosphere, rather than from the surface beneath it. The surface itself only emits 10% of its energy back to space. The rest is absorbed by clouds and by greenhouse gases. The rest is absorbed by clouds and by greenhouse gases, heating the atmosphere. Water vapor and carbon dioxide are the two most abundant greenhouse gases. 
Shortwave radiation from the sun passes through greenhouse gases, but longwave radiation is absorbed by them. Greenhouse gases absorb longwave infrared radiation from the Earth. They then re-emit it in all directions. About half of the energy is directed out to space. The other half is directed back to Earth. This results in a continual exchange of energy between the surface of the Earth and the atmosphere above it. The longwave radiation contained in this exchange causes the warming known as the greenhouse effect. In order to understand the Earth's climate, it is critical that we understand how warm the planet is, how its temperature changes over time, and what factors can force those changes. The Sun is the Earth's primary source of heat. It is constantly bathing us with solar radiation. The land surface, cloud cover, and our atmosphere help determine how much of that energy is reflected and how much is retained. The incoming and outgoing energy should be in balance. If they are, temperature will remain relatively constant over time. When you add greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and methane, you change the radiation balance at the top of the atmosphere. You reduce the amount of energy leaving. This imbalance causes heating. Some of the excess heat is stored in the ocean. Sears Clouds and the Earth's Radiant Energy System is an instrument in several NASA Earth observing satellites that tracks the amounts of longwave terrestrial radiation and reflected shortwave solar radiation to help us better understand Earth's climate system. Sears monitors radiation levels. MODIS monitors the amount of cloud cover. Radiation emission and reflection, as well as the extent of cloud cover, are affected by events such as El Niño. The amount of cloud and ice cover also influence Earth's energy budget. Researchers use SIRS data and similar data from other sources to help establish long-term trends slash. To know if changes we see are due to human activity or due to long-term variability in the Earth's climate system, we need a long period of coverage by our instruments. SIRS instruments and their predecessors have been taking Earth's temperature for almost 30 years. As you examine this graphic notice that most climate forces are positive. Only a few are negative. This makes the overall climate forcing from human activity positive and is what is driving the climate system to warmer average global temperatures. These graphs and images show the long-term impact of three different scenarios for controlling the emission of greenhouse gases. In each case, there will be an increase in average global temperature. But if we do nothing there will be a much bigger impact to Earth's climate system by our greenhouse gases. What can we do to limit the impacts of greenhouse gases from human activity? We can grow more trees, design our crops, and irrigate the deserts, all to increase the removal of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere by the photosynthesis of plants. We can liquefy carbon dioxide and inject it deep underground for long-term storage, or pump it into the deep sea. Some scientists feel if we fertilize the ocean with iron more algae will grow, also removing carbon dioxide from the air. We could also cool the planet by adding more aerosols to the stratosphere, or by placing giant solar reflectors in orbit. Maybe we could just burn less fossil fuel. Removal of carbon from the climate system is called carbon sequestration. It is one possible solution to the problem of global warming. What others do you know?